Resort and Casino, we like to celebrate life's little moments. Oh, and the big ones too. Because around here, when you're completely in the moment, that's when the magic happens. Come in and find your moment at Wind River Resort and Casino. Ah, uh, good morning to you. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Kruger. Weather NorCal, you are watching Coffee with Kruger. Of course, that's why I got my coffee right here. This is not a gimmick. I maybe you can kind of see in there a little bit of coffee. Can you see it? Oh, there it is. Yep. All right. Mmm. Slurping my coffee. I'm a slurper. Do you slurp when you drink your coffee? I don't know. It seems like when you slurp it, you get a little bit more flavor off it. I don't know. Uh, I know it's rude. And uh, I'll try not to slurp um, when I'm doing the show with you. Good morning to you, Debbie. You're the first one to chime in this morning. So glad you could join us on this Friday. And as I look outside, right here in my window, I'm looking out my window. I do actually have a window out here. Uh, I can see people walking by in my neighborhood, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, not a, not a cloud to be seen in the sky. Um, and <laughs> that's pretty much the case almost anywhere. With the exception of the coast, we are seeing some fog there, but it's not as bad um, as we've seen for some of those mornings as well. In fact, let's get you right to Kruger's Quick Cast so you can know what to expect as you're heading out the door this morning. If you're just kind of uh, getting in and kind of tuning in this morning going, hey, I just want to know what's going on right now so I can head on out here shortly. Well, you can with Kruger's Quick Cast. So we start with the current temperatures out there right now and it's a nice cool start to the day. Get those morning chores done before it starts to heat up because it is going to heat up today. It's going to be warmer than it has been over the last few days, including the coast. 57 degrees right now in Reading, 61 in Chico. Well, I tell you what, a nice cool start. 30s for some of the higher elevations like Bernie and El Turris. Bit of a temperature trend, uh, temperature inversion, that is, toward Shingletown at 65. Chester sitting at 39. And those mid to upper 40s for the coast. So the visibility actually looking pretty darn good this morning along the coast. In fact, looks like the camera out at uh, Harbor District is back up and running. And hey, look who's back. Our little buddy. We haven't seen him in a while, grooming himself this morning. I forget the name we gave him. I think we started with the name, but uh, yes, we got we got the seagull. I don't know if it's the same one. I mean, I don't know, it's hard to tell, but uh, it seems like every time this morning almost, we see the seagull. Oh, getting that scratch behind the ear there. That's always good to get out. Oh, it feels good, right? Um, boy, that's a, that's a pretty good one right there. Ooh, it just keeps on going, but look, Let's go on beyond the bird now. <laughs> Look at this beautiful picture, right? We've got the beautiful colors out there, not a cloud to be seen, not much in the way of that marine layer. If any, you do have to look out in the distance, can't even see it there. And then you can see that just kind of those colors going into the water, absolutely gorgeous. We've got, of course, the Elk Country Cam just north of Trinidad this morning, turning out to be a gorgeous start to the day there as well. A nice cool start. So again, we look at the visibility and it looks pretty darn good, really pretty much across the board. So as you're heading out the door this morning, I maybe needed to update here for the coast, but yeah, there was some fog earlier this morning. It's already beginning to show signs of burning off. I'm expecting more sunshine for the afternoon and of course, sunshine for everybody else as well. So looking at future cast, I mean, look at uh, the noon hour today. You're looking at sunshine here for everybody on the coast. We may see the return of some fog around Eureka, working northward up towards parts of northern Humboldt County. But for the most part, a lot of sunshine today, but we may see that fog return tonight, especially for Humboldt Bay, down Highway 101, towards Blue Lake, for example, Fortuna, right? But I do expect mainly just clear skies here, even tonight, for places like Del Norte County and southern Humboldt County. Of course, sunny skies everywhere else, right? But temperatures are warming back up. I was talking about possibility, possibility for some triple digits on Friday. I think we could see that here for today, 100 in Reading. But as you head south, temperatures may be just, well, let's just say not as hot. We'll call for the mid-90s for Chico, Willows, Corning, Oroville. Red Bluff about 98 degrees. For the mountains, we've got temperatures upper 80s, mid-90s for Trinity County, mid-90s for Inland, and those mid-60s for the coast. Taking a look at your seven-day outlook for the valley, it is going to be warming up today. We see a dip on Saturday, Sunday, warming back up Monday, Tuesday, another dip for Wednesday, Thursday of next week. Yes, you're going to hear me say it again. 
roller coaster ride, right? Temperature is still going up and down. This is a trend that's going to continue for a while. We're even seeing a dip in the temperatures for the coast over the weekend before they go back up again Monday, Tuesday, and then back down again slightly for Wednesday, Thursday. And that's the trend here for inland, for Trinity County. It's also the trend for all of the mountain locations, generally in the 80s for the mountains uh, through really the next seven days with some of the warmer spots getting into the low 90s. Although it looks like Susanville up to about 95 degrees by next Tuesday. All right, let's talk about that fire danger. And you can see we have a little bit of a gusty wind in northern Shasta County, but otherwise fairly calm winds for most of us. We can take you into the afternoon today and looks like fairly calm winds generally coming in from the south, 10 to 15 miles per hour for pretty much everyone across the board. For your humidity levels, not looking so great. So as it warms up, it's dry, a little breezy in some spots. We do have that elevated fire weather risk, which we need to take pay close attention to for today and tomorrow. Beautiful shot out at Lake Oroville. You can see the sunrise there. Good. I'm glad we got to see that before I had to kind of change the uh, camera of view here. Coming in from Lake Oroville, North Four Bay. Also a beautiful shot there, looking at some fairly calm winds out at Oroville. This, high, this morning on Main Street, uh, Highway 32 in Chico, looks like the camera is once again kind of frozen. But looks like we're still kind of getting the representation here. Highway 99 at Neal Road. Don't have a frozen camera there. The cars are moving right along on Highway 99 there at Neal Road. Let's take out to Sundial Bridge. This is always a still picture. The latest is coming in at 7.06, which is about a minute ago. You can take a look at uh, Highway 44 at Sundial Bridge Drive. This is our latest photo. I've been checking out your photos here, courtesy of Jordy Hart. This is the sunrise over Neeland. Wow, look at that. You've got a bit of that marine layer kind of coming on in. You can kind of go above that. You've got the partly cloudy skies. The sun is rising. I mean, come on. Does it get more gorgeous than that? Thank you, Jordy, for sending in that photo. And if you want to send in your photos, all you have to do is do it from the free Weather NorCal app on your iPhone, your Android. And if you don't have the app already, number one, my question is, why not? Why not? Check it out. You know, there have been a couple of times, and maybe they're just being nice, but there have been a couple of times I've had people uh, download the app with me. I've shown them where to get it. And they, you know, they swear by their, their weather app. And then they check out mine. They go, oh, wow, this is pretty neat. And then they start exploring it a little bit more. And they go, okay, I really like this. So check it out. Not just to, sh to share your photos, but just it's, it's a great app in general. Because number one, it's, it's, uh, it's local centric. It's all about the local forecast here in Northern California. Now, that being said, a lot of you may not know this. It will travel with you. It will give you the forecast wherever you are, but keep in mind, I don't do a forecast outside of Northern California, so it will be AI outside of Northern California, but I will say this, the forecast that you see on your app, the Weather NorCal app, is my forecast, and uh, especially for the valley and, the, and many of the mountains as well. So just kind of keep that in mind, but it's not my forecast once we get outside of Northern California, but it will follow you to tell you all your watches and warnings in the area as well. So. Yeah, you got to check out that free Weather NorCal app. Well, you know what today is? It is Friday. We've got our pet of the week. It's too bad my wife didn't do this uh, pet of the week because, as you know, my wife's name is Sadie. The pet of the week is named Sadie. Isn't that fun? All right, so check it out. Hello everyone, Mike Kruger from Weather NorCal. This is Pet of the Week, and we have got Katrina from Haven Humane Society. And this, my wife would love this too bad, she's not hosting this uh, this week, <laughs> but this is Sadie, right? Yeah, this is Sadie. So we've got some kind of white colored animal here. Would this be like a, uh, I don't know, a, what, what are we looking at here? She's a lab Pyrenees mix. Okay, so I was thinking lab, right? Ooh, hel oh, hello, Pyrenees. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Is that kind of the longer hair going on there? Yeah, it's a longer <laughs> hair. Someone um, wants to be a lap dog. It's kind of a curly tail, all of that. Her size, she's pretty big. She's yeah. almost 100 pounds. Um, very fun mix. I mean, you know, Pyrenees are typically like livestock guardian dogs. Okay. Um, I would say though, Sadie though is much more 
geared towards a family dog life than a livestock guardian life. She's very people oriented. I see that, yeah. Um, very playful. She loves to swim. She loves to do outdoorsy things. She loves other dogs. Um, definitely a people dog. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the train. Apparently not. We've got a train going by, but it looks like Sadie is okay with it. Which means not scared of a lot of things. No. So a good family dog. Mm -hmm. um, active it seems like has a bit of you still left in her right yeah she's about three years old okay so very good age all right so a good family dog um i'd say even a little bit of a lap dog going on here she thinks she's a lap dog yeah <laughs> yeah that's always fun when you got a hundred pound dog on you that's how my nessie is she's about well mate not quite your whoa yeah okay well there you go hello there you what? are see so yes some good energy i think yes a very good family dog and would have fun playing in the backyard, playing fetch the works. So if you're interested in Sadie, be sure to give the number at, on the bottom of your screen a call and Haven Humane Society will take care of you. So thank you, Katrina. Thank yeah. you, Sadie. And we'll see you next week on Pet of the Week. All right. So, you know, really great dog. Did have some good energy. It's one of those dogs that, yeah, uh, definitely thinks it's a lap dog, um, even though it's 100 pounds. That's always fun. Uh, you know, we love lap dogs. Ours, you know, our dog, she's what, um, just under 70 pounds. She loves to sit on our lap. She loves to just get right on the couch with us or in the bed, all that. We don't, we don't prevent her from doing that. We love it. Um, it's fun. But uh, yeah, so check it out, Sadie. And of course, uh, you can adopt her from Haven Humane Society. You can call the number. You can go to the website, The Works. And of course, you can always, if you're like, oh, I missed it all, not a problem. Number one, you can come back a little bit later and watch uh, Coffee with Kruger. Uh, from the website but you can also i'll take you over to the website here you can also go to weathernorcal.com and you'll see right here where see where it says animal family at the top you can also go down over here where it says animal family you click on it and you see pet of the week right there there is the pet of the week and then you can play that and then you can get all the information that you need so there's a look at sadie right there we get the intro right uh, and then we get right to the Haven Humane Society Pet of the Week. And of course, then what I end up doing here is I put up that phone number so you can call the phone number. You can also go to Haven Humane Society's uh, website as well. So be sure to check that out. But uh, it's always fun. We love uh, checking out uh, Pet of the Week and uh, do that once a week. So it is fun. Let's check out with everybody this morning, see how you're doing. We're also going to take a look at the national calendar. This one's kind of interesting national calendar today because uh, there's one in here that would just not really work for us at all. So let's take a look at it first and foremost. You can see you got National Gay Men's HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Always important, right? National Day of Forgiveness. So if there's somebody that you haven't forgiven yet, now might be a good time. Today might be a good time to give that person a call or give them a visit and say, I forgive you. That's what today is. National, okay, this is for us. No, not for us. National Scarf Day? Come on, really? No, it's not Scarf Day for us. Um, because, we, yeah, that woman's wearing a coat and a scarf. Not us. We're wearing short sleeves and shorts and no scarf at all. Uh, National Brave Day. Um, not exactly sure what that is. Uh, we can kind of click on it and see what that's all about here. National Brave Day. Looks like it's about women. On fourth Friday, Brave honors women who lift each other up, rescue each other, and make each other brave. Well, now, isn't that great? Uh, National Corned Beef Hash Day. Isn't that usually on uh, St. Patrick's Day? I don't know. Um, hash, corned Beef Hash is good. A little ketchup on there, too. National Crush a Can Day. That's always fun. I used to enjoy that. Um, you would, you know, crush it with your foot. That's always fun. And of course, they got those can crushers as well. But of course, that's also a great way, a uh, reminder to recycle your cans. And when you crush them, you save space in your recycle bin. So there you go. There are all your different days. What are you going to be celebrating? Of all of these, which one are you going to celebrate today? You tell me in the comment section below. Are you going to celebrate any of these six? Are you going to get, have some uh, corned beef today? Are you going to wear a scarf? Uh, are you going to crush a can? Are you going to forgive somebody today? Are you going to be brave? Are you going to help uplift another woman, a fellow woman, if you're a woman? Uh, are you going to celebrate National Gay Men's HIV and Awareness Day? There's all kinds of things you can celebrate. It, you know, you can just celebrate the fact that it's another day and then it's Friday. Friday is always nice. I like Friday. I celebrate that. 
I always celebrate that every Friday. Get that weekend off. Oh, yes, it's nice. Everybody likes having the weekends. But sometimes you got to work the weekend. Sometimes i got to work the weekend. Sometimes you may have to work the weekends, but it's not all the time. So it's always nice to have those days off. Uh, we got Tracy saying, Burr, good morning, Mike, from uh, Robert. We've got Lisa saying, late to the weather party, but I made it. Have a great day. Don't forget to hit the honeybee. Oh, yeah, that's right. The honeybee festival is this weekend. Uh, I believe Saturday and Sunday. So be sure to check that out and make sure that you've got water to drink or you just drink plain water. I'm sure they'll have water there available for you to purchase. Um, and stay cool. <laughs> Excuse me. Stay cool out there because uh, you get in the shade. Do what you can to stay cool because it's going to be hot. Uh, good morning from Amanda. Good morning from Mark Olson, Ruth Sanchez, Catherine Schmidt, a lot of the regulars checking in this morning. Curtis Brown, Chappie is saying uh, good morning. Uh, and we've got Chappie saying George. Oh, George. Yes, I think it was George that we named. Let's see if George is still out there. Uh, let's go to the camera here. See if George is still on the... There's George. <laughs> I love it. Let's put it on full screen here. Uh, there's a look at George. George is still, still grooving himself, taking a little bath this morning. Oh, there's another one flying away. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we should... Oh, oh look. Oh, boy. They got, we got a bunch coming up here this morning. George is, I don't know, is George welcoming? How, how are they going to, oh, there's a third one. Oh, wow, we got a lot coming up here. So George is like, all right, let me go approach these guys. Let's see what happens here. Is there going to be a confrontation? Is George saying this is my roof? Huh, this is kind of fun to watch. Oh, see how they're kind of walking away? And then, oh, look at him. He's kind of pushing them down. I think George is king of the roof. <laughs> Get out of here. Look at that. Look at that. What a stubborn guy. Oh, do we have another one trying to come in? Oh, we could look at this all day, right? Maybe we'll come back and see uh, if George uh, claimed his roof back. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's get out of here. We're going to get to the forecast now, shall we? Or we could just look at this camera all morning long. And of course, as you know, Coffee with Kruger is made possible by Wind River Resort and Casino. At Wind River Resort and Casino, enjoy friendly service, a wide variety of specials and promotions, plus all of your favorite slots and table games. All right, let's go ahead and get to your forecast, shall we? We're going to start off with our temperatures out there this morning. We're sitting at about 57 degrees for Redding, 59 degrees in Red Bluff, 59 in Willow, 61 degrees for Chico, 38 for Al Turris, 39 degrees for Bernie, and 48 degrees right now in Susanville. So it's cool for some of those higher elevations. A bit of that temperature inversion in Shingletown at 65. Uh, there you can see about 45 out in uh, Eureka, 47 degrees in Crescent City. So yeah, a nice cool start to the day. Get those morning chores done because it's, it's hot again today. We're getting back to that summer heat. Uh, I think the north end of the valley, Redding, Anderson, Palisadro, about 100 degrees here today, even the city of Shasta Lake. Uh, but you head south, we see temperatures drop slightly, maybe somewhere in the mid-90s for places like Chico. Slight drop this weekend, another hot start to the work week. So we see a slight drop back up to about 100 degrees for many of us in the valley on Monday. And then a gradual drop in those temperatures toward the middle and especially the latter part of next week. So there you can see we are seeing those fairly calm winds across the board right now. But the winds for this afternoon, not much going on even for the coast here. Generally between 10 and 15 miles per hour across the board. It's a little bit stronger with those winds on Saturday, especially in the eastern mountains. This may elevate the fire weather risk. Also, slightly stronger winds for parts of the valley, but still about 15 miles per hour along the coast. Sunday, the wind should die down for the most part. However, we're seeing some strong winds for central Siskiyou County. The coast also seeing some gusty winds as well. So looking at our humidity levels, yes, we're dry for today in single digits, even off into the eastern mountains. That's gonna elevate the fire weather risk for today. We still have very dry conditions on Saturday as well with the stronger winds, low humidity, and the heat. We're going to have elevated fire weather risk again for your Saturday. How about Sunday? Not as elevated because, yes, it is drier, but the winds are calming down. We have stronger winds up to the north, and, of course, those stronger winds on Sunday for the coast. So what does that mean for our fire weather risk? Well, there you can see today, especially the north end of the valley, we do have the high fire danger. And you can see it's a little bit more elevated off to the east as well. Let's take you into Saturday. Looks like even higher fire danger. Once again, because the winds will be slightly stronger on Saturday, it's still hot 
and it's still very dry. We're seeing a lot more yellows popping up on the map in the eastern mountains. There's central Siskiyou County. There you can see some orange indicating the high fire danger there as well. By the time we get into Sunday, you can see the fire danger does drop a bit here. Again, temperature is dropping slightly, but going back up again for early next week. So you can't really see it too clearly here, but there are some storms up to our north. That's important because as long as we see these storms continue to ride to our north, that's going to keep us from getting as hot as we could. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain that here in a second. But let's take a look at future cast. We are going to be looking at the possibility for some fog developing later tonight and into tomorrow morning for the entire coast here. So tomorrow morning, I think we may start off with some of that morning fog, even around Crescent City, but that should, for the most part, burn off. It's gonna be a little bit harder. It's gonna take a while for it to burn off, but I do expect uh, some of that to burn off in some areas, not everyone, Saturday afternoon for the coast. Sunday morning, morning fog, especially around Eureka, otherwise clear skies in Crescent City. Sunday afternoon, clear skies across the board, not only for the coast, but everyone else as well. And of course, sunny skies today tomorrow for everyone else minus the coast there you can see the drier conditions that we do have in store for us in the long range so here's the overall setup high pressure to our east high pressure down to our south and west remember i was talking about the storms that are to our north these are storms that are trying to move in we're starting to see more of that transition as we go into fall and these colder storms are trying to move in it's how far south that they push will determine how much cooler our temperatures get but bottom line, even when they don't move over us, even when they're riding to our north, it suppresses the heat. So look what happens as we go into the weekend. This area of low pressure, this trough, this cooler air rides to our north. It does hit uh, Washington, right? And off into Canada. But what it's doing is it's suppressing this heat and this heat here and allowing our temperatures to drop slightly over the weekend. When that moves out, what we've got here is a rid of high pressure, especially over the Eastern Pacific and even the desert Southwest, they're joining forces. And you can see a little bit of that arc. That is the ridge, but it's a fairly flat ridge. But that warmer air is coming in from both sides, moving on in. And as a result, we're back up to about 100 degrees for many of us in the valley. All right, so this storm system is gonna ride to our north, once again, stay way to our north. But what it will do is flatten out that ridge. Now you see the warmer air way down to our south and east, the warmer air way down to our west. This is the area of low pressure I've got my eyes on. Now, this particular forecast model is more aggressive with this cooler air coming this far south. What this will do is a couple of things. If this pans out, cooler temperatures significantly, we're talking 80s now in the valley, low 80s, maybe even some 70s. This is much cooler air. It could bring us some rain as well. Now we're looking at Saturday, October 5th, 5th. So this is over a week away. A lot can happen between now and then. And I'll tell you this, the European forecast model is not as aggressive with this area of low pressure. It keeps it a lot farther to the north. As a result, we wouldn't get as cool. So there still is some discrepancy in the longer range forecast models, meaning I can't forecast this with very good confidence. So I'm kind of going down the middle of the road here when we're looking at the longer range with those temperatures, which we'll take a look at here in a second. Now, what we've seen here through this week is the longer range outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. And really, up until about today, we've been in a lot of these uh, darker reds and some of the pinks. That's indicating better chances of seeing above normal rainfall, uh, excuse me, uh, temperatures. As we start getting the oranges, that means we have slimmer chances of seeing above normal temperatures. And we're getting within that category here for Northern California. What that means is you can start to see some of that trend uh, change in the overall trend here. So here's the trend that I'm predicting at this point. So about 100 degrees today for Redding, there's that slight drop. We're only talking about a two to three degree drop from today, right, for Saturday, Sunday. Then we're back up to about 100 degrees for Monday, Tuesday, and then that gradual dip in the temperature. So if we were looking at that forecast model that had that big area of low pressure very close to us, these temperatures would be more like 80, 79 degrees. But uh, I'm going middle of the road because the European forecast model is a lot less aggressive with that area of low pressure. So for now, it looks like there's a decent chance of seeing at least cooler temperatures closer to normal by the end of next week and a week from this upcoming weekend as well. Let's take a look at the wave heights because they are fairly high uh, and we're not gonna see much change going into your Saturday either. 
So when we look at the marine forecast, you'll notice that there is a small craft advisory, but that won't take effect until later this evening and into tomorrow. In the meantime, we're looking at those winds from the north at 10 to 15 knots, waves from the north at 5 feet at 7 seconds, and from the northwest at 6 feet at 13 seconds, which, by the way, I didn't point out yesterday, but yesterday the sunrise and sunset were at the same time. Well, let's say the sunrise was at 7.07 a.m. yesterday. The sunset was at 7.07 p.m. yesterday, so exactly 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. But we're kind of starting to see those spread apart a little bit, meaning longer nights, shorter days. Oh yeah, we are on our way to that. And we have been really. Uh, and again, that small craft advisory this evening and into tomorrow. All right, here's your forecast. For your Trinity County neighborhood forecast. We got temperatures mid 90s, low 90s Sunday. Really, so when you look at the seven day outlook on all of the neighborhood forecasts, you're gonna see the same trend. They're gonna go down, up, then back down again. That's the trend for everyone, including the coast, actually. Let's take it to the south. You can see about 85 degrees for Mad River, 90 in High and Palm, 94 degrees for Hay Fork, and Wildwood a high of about 88 degrees. All right, let's take a look at your north coast neighborhood forecast. 87 for Miranda, 91 degrees for Redway, 79 for Redcrest, and 84 degrees in Honeydew. Let's take you up to the north, and uh, we'll eventually see some of that fog kind of dissipate. Ferndale, yeah, I mean, you're already seeing that, right? Uh, and Fortuna, 69, 71 degrees in Highsville, and Rio Dell, about 70 degrees. Let's take you up north, 94 in Hoopa. Yeah, it's warming up again. Willow Creek, about 95, 72 for Trinidad, and 64 degrees in Eureka. All right, up north, 77 degrees for Smith River, 71 for Klamath, 70 in Oric. Oh, look at that in Orleans, a high of 98 degrees. Here's your Siskiyou County neighborhood forecast. Low to mid 90s for the Highway 96 corridor. The I-5 corridor, upper 80s to low 90s there. Also seeing that up and down trend here. We take a look at Scott Valley, right around 88 degrees for Fort Jones, all the way down to Etna, 87 degrees for Callahan for that daytime high today. Central and eastern Siskiyou County, low to mid 80s up to the north and east, mid to upper 80s, even some low 90s, 92 degrees for McLeod, 93 for Dunsmuir, but Mount Shasta, you'll top out at about 88 degrees today. 85 out of Newell, 89 for El Turris, 88 for California Pines, likely a high of about 89 degrees. And we take you off into your eastern mountains, neighborhood forecast to the north. Looks like Bieber, about 87. Fall River Mills, 88. 92 for Montgomery Creek. It's getting pretty warm up there. Even Biola getting into the low 80s for your daytime highs. Let's take a look at your forecast for Lake Almanor and Lassen Park. Obviously, the cooler spot will be the park today. Temperatures mainly in the mid to upper 80s, kind of around the lake there, 85 degrees in Westwood. We take you to the south, Paradise, you'll see a high of 90 today, Mineral 85, 89 for Susanville, and 88 degrees for Doyle. I'm very excited to announce our new Valley Neighborhood Forecast sponsor, Walgamoth Painting. Not Walgamoth, not uh, Walgamoogle, right? They're, they're, they're famous commercial, right? Uh, but very excited. Uh, I got to meet Don Walgamoth himself, and he is just a great guy. They're celebrating 50 years of business this year. This year, So they've been in business for 50 years. And Don, let me tell you, just a great guy, um, and they do a great job. They, they're, they're a staple when it comes to who you go to to do all of your painting jobs, right? And I know that they work very closely with Cascade Paints uh, to get their paints as well. So uh, just great uh, overall company. So I highly recommend if you've got a job around the house, they do all kinds of painting jobs, small jobs around the house uh, to bigger jobs, industrial jobs. So they do it all. So don't forget that if you uh, want the best paint job for your house or around your house, go to Walgamoth Painting. All right, there's that big plug, but Again, excited to have them on as the Valley Neighborhood Forecast Sponsor. 98 degrees for Red Bluff, 95 in Chico, 94 for Oroville. There you can see Chico, mid 90s through Sunday, uh, upper 90s uh, for Monday, and then right around 100 degrees by Tuesday. So yes, it is warming back up again. 100 for the city of Shasta Lake, 100 in Redding, 100 Anderson, 99 Palisadro, Cottonwood about 98 degrees. Let's take a look at that seven day forecast for Redding. So you can see the temperatures are dipping slightly over the weekend, but still hot. So if you got those outdoor plans and a lot of big events, of course, as we know, the Honey Bee Festival, both Saturday and Sunday, and other great events going on over the weekend, Make sure you stay hydrated. That's the bottom line, right? And then we're up to 100 degrees again on Monday, Tuesday, 
and then a gradual drop in those temperatures as we take you into your Wednesday and your Thursday. That is your Friday forecast, folks. Let's check in and see what everyone's up to this morning. I know I'd ask the question, what are you going to be celebrating today? Maybe you don't even want to participate in that here, but we got Tracy Sackett saying good morning. That was a 11 minutes ago. Um, good morning, Mike. My husband is a rancher, so he'll be celebrating the fact that he's working cattle in nice weather. That's a nice thing to celebrate. That is for sure. Um, good morning. Clear on the coast. Coming in from Jackie Dixon and Tracy Sackett saying burr. Yeah, it is pretty chilly this morning for some of those higher elevations. And of course, good morning coming in from Robert. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us on your Friday Coffee with Kruger. The weekend is almost here. We just got to get through one more workday, right? I know I'm doing it. I've been up early this morning getting the forecast ready for it, and I'm ready to call it a weekend and be ready for it. Well, we're going to go ahead and leave you with a couple of uh, photos, or should I say some uh, live cameras to wrap up the show. In the meantime, here's what I want you to do. First of all, I want you to have a great day. All right. Number two, if you have the weekend off, I want you to enjoy your weekend. And if you want to check the latest forecast, I've got a great meteorologist that works for me on the weekends. His name is Brian Wilson, and he is just a young up and coming meteorologist. He knows his stuff. So do me a favor, check out his forecast over the weekend. And if you want the latest forecast, he will give you a detailed, good quality forecast for you. And of course, I'll be back on Monday at 6 a.m. with the latest update. And we'll of course have Coffee with Kruger bright and early at 7 a.m. Until then, have a great weekend and we will see you on Friday. All right. No, excuse me. Monday. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for the weekend. How about you? All right. Have yourselves a great weekend and we'll see you Monday.